the Darwinists have known since the 19th century that the Cambrian explosion did not conform to the picture of life that Darwin proposed. But one of their explanations for that was something called the artifact hypothesis, the idea that we were simply not sampling the fossil record sufficiently to find the missing transitional intermediates. In the strata just beneath the Cambrian fossil beds, we have a very favorable environment that would have preserved uh, ancestral forms of these animals had they existed. So one of the versions of the artifact hypothesis was the claim that we don't find these missing Precambrian animals because they were too small and they were soft-bodied. And what we now find in the Chinese fossils, in the beds just beneath the Cambrian explosion, are perfectly preserved soft-bodied tissues, sponge embryos, that are, of course, soft and microscopic. The new finds in the Chengjiang formations really completely put to rest the artifact hypothesis. If you can preserve an embryo, you can preserve an animal. And if those animals were there, then we should have found them. And they're not there. Other defenders of Darwin's theory argue that random mutations in a special set of genes, called Hox genes, are responsible for dramatically speeding up the evolutionary process during the Cambrian period. There's a series of body patterning genes. They are called the Hox genes. Very careful molecular studies basically date the Cambrian as the period of time in which the Hox genes first became arrayed in something like their present conformation. And what this suggests is that the explosion of diversity results uh, from the first organization of these genes in this pattern, which then provided a toolkit which could allow evolution to produce much greater variety in body shape and size and organization than could ever have existed before. But what's interesting to me is that these genes are turned on late in development, long after the body plan is established. A fruit fly is already a fruit fly embryo before the Hox genes kick in. The same for a human, or a worm, or a starfish. So there's no way the Hox genes can explain this rapid proliferation of body plants in the Cambrian explosion. In biology, anytime you want to build a new structure, you have to provide new information. At the very least, to produce a new organism, like a trilobite, for example, you need a whole bunch of new cell types. And, they, and then you need new proteins to service the different the unique cell types. And to build the proteins, you need genetic information in the form of DNA. And the big question that the Cambrian explosion poses is where does all that new information come from? Where does the new information come from needed to build those proteins, to service those new cell types, to build these fundamentally new forms of animals? And the, the, the Darwinians are really at a loss to answer that question. It's a sudden emergence of a huge amount of new information, and it really defies the capacity of the natural selection mutation mechanism to produce all that information. So it's a, really a grave difficulty. This is not a, a minor anomaly.